Yeah, it was great. It's a lot of me going, oh, interesting. Wow, I didn't know that. You're a lot smarter than me. <laughs> Welcome to the first edition of the Yard Jockeys podcast, where I talk to all the experts in our industry. Today, we talk with Jason Miller, an associate professor of supply chain management at Michigan State University. In addition, as you can see, we have some model 18 wheelers behind us. If you're a client and you'd like to see your truck up here, send it in. We'll put it up for you. Thank you. All right, Jason, you ready to get started? All right, Jason, before we launch into everything we're going to talk about today, why don't you give us a little bit about yourself and your qualifications? Yeah, so I'm a uh, tenured research professor at Michigan State University. I'm in the supply chain management department. My primary research area is the truck transportation sector. Um, and I take a sort of a look at that as an economist does. So I spend a lot of time with government data on this sector. Okay. Okay. So a lot of what you know and read about is very pertinent to our clients and our uh, viewers. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit? I know 2021 was a crazy year. Why don't you kind of describe what we solved from a freight perspective and a driver perspective? Yeah. So 2021, um, I'd say the biggest thing to recognize was the 20 the polar vortex in february of 2021 was such an outlier event that really i think shaped the dynamics that we saw for the year because to put it in perspective that was the most disruptive weather event since at minimum hurricane katrina but more likely realistically the blizzard of 1978 oh, wow. in terms of yeah in terms of just how it disrupted things and the reason I say that is because if you look, for example, at spot market prices, mm -hmm. it seemed that the market was actually starting to cool a little bit before that. And then, boom, we had prices skyrocket upwards because of pent up demand that um, needed to be fulfilled in March. And that sort of started spot prices, you know, back on an upward, um, upward climb. Contract prices so far are up, you know, the Bureau of Labor Statistics saying 20 percent year over year, if not a little more. That's an all-time record um, in terms of year-over-year -year increases that we're looking at. Overall, demand seems to have bounced back to essentially where it was, even actually a little higher than this time in 2018. We're still a little bit short of the second quarter 2018 sort of post-Great Recession peak, yeah. but I wouldn't be surprised if we don't um, get, get to that and the middle of 2022, given the infrastructure bill right. combined with, it seems that a lot of the supply chain snarls are getting sort of straightened out. I'd say the other story for 2021 is just the stimulus package in March created right. so much consumer demand that really drove a lot of the, you know, wholesale and warehousing activity and the e-commerce activity. Right. And so the other story to keep in mind is that COVID-19 really upended the freight mixture and that we've had essentially trade sector shipments are up substantially from 2019. So five, six, 7% at least, whereas manufacturing is actually still down a little bit. Okay. And one of the challenges for shippers has been that it's hard for carriers to adjust their capacity to different lanes that easily because you have to have you know, maintain balance. Right. And that's one reason we've seen so much spot freight is those freight networks just look different than what they did before well, COVID. Let me ask you, you know, you said you said something about the stimulus package and how consumer demand spiked because of it. So I think that's a kind of a good segue into what we saw with drivers. I know most of our clients feel like it was impossible to find drivers this year and that everyone was raising pay. Uh, increasing benefits, try, just trying to get drivers in the door. Did we see an exaggerated driver shortage or what, what were we experiencing there? So we can tell from the Bureau of Labor Statistics runs the job opening and labor turnover survey or the JOLTS data. You could see for the broad super sector of transportation, warehousing and utilities, there was a little bit of surge of quitting activity in April and May of this year. But I think more the bigger story on the challenges with recruiting drivers is we've seen essentially record new entry in terms of very small trucking companies that have started life this year. Um, for perspective, we've seen we saw in the second quarter of 2021 
the increase in new establishments um, in truck transportation, which is a very good proxy for new entry, was three times what it was oh, before wow. the pandemic. And so I think on the standpoint of the challenge of recruiting drivers, the large carriers are running into the challenge that a lot of drivers are either breaking off on their own and becoming self-employed, or you're having they're starting very small trucking companies. Right. So you're seeing a shift of essentially employment towards the smaller firms. Is that and simply it, because it became so lucrative within that year due to the demand? I think, yeah, you know, a lot of folks are cha chasing those high spot prices. And the fact that we continue to have increased penetration of brokerage in the sector, both digital brokerage, so your convoys, your Uber freights, as well as your traditional brokerages like C.H. Robinson, the greater extent that shippers are now engaging with brokers to find capacity is making it easier for these small trucking companies to essentially build out a business that is designed around a broker centric approach versus go back 25 years into the mid 90s your strategy as a small carrier was typically to attach yourself to a couple local manufacturers and haul their freight right and so that business model i think is sort of not as prevalent as what we're seeing now which is this more spot centric strategy well here's where i ask you to put on your nostradamus hat and uh prognosticate about the future. Um, do you think that business model comes back? Do you think we're in a new normal? What, what are we about to see in the coming months? Well, so over the past 20 years, we've actually seen a steady fall in the size of new entrant trucking companies, which suggests a different business model um, has been going on for a while. I think the pandemic's accelerated that. In terms of what I expect for 2022, is it seems that a lot of the supply chain snarls will will work themselves out. I, I think by the end of the second quarter of 2022, barring some, again, cataclysmic right. event. Right now, I think we're all concerned, especially how does Omicron affect per, potentially Chinese factory production is right. sort of the new, new concern that's coming up. But barring something cataclysmic again, it seems that the disruptions will start working themselves out by the end of the second quarter. We have seen a lot of employment added in trucking, even though a lot of the large carriers are still saying it's hard to recruit. We're seeing overall employment is going up. Um, so I think that we should have a better balance of demand and capacity in 22 than 21, which should cause spot prices to start to come down a little bit. I do not expect anything like we saw in 2019, where we saw essentially spot prices collapse. Um, it just doesn't seem that we're, that's in the cards right now. And I think we will see sort of a return to the more traditional freight next year um, mm -hmm. that we saw pre-COVID and that we'll see more manufacturing activity. But I wouldn't be surprised if retail sales don't essentially stall out because we've just had such strong consumer spending on goods right. that that is eventually, you know, you can only buy so many computers, so many pieces of furniture, right, so, right. so many building materials for your house. So if, can, if I attempt to summarize here, uh, recruiting drivers is always difficult. There's been a shortage for as long as I've been in this industry, um, but it may it may not feel as tough in 2022, you think? Maybe it should stabilize some? Yeah, I, th I think that we'll see things start to stabilize just in general. I, I expect the freight market will move towards stabilization again. You know, spot price is probably coming down after the end of the holidays, and we'll see how, you know, how much, they, if they fall unseasonably in the start in the first quarter. But um I think that what you'll also see is, a lot, is we'll be getting into some of the new carriers being essentially in year two of operation. Right. And roughly Census Bureau data suggests about 30% of new trucking companies fail between year one and year two. That was actually my so, next question. It was how many of them would stick around? Yep. So the, be the best guess we have is about 30% will not be in business by year two. And so that will likely return some capacity from let's say drivers who broke off on their own 
right. towards going back to working as employees. And so well, that, yeah, I wonder if that could almost be a strategy for some of our, you know, fleet clients is looking at some of these smaller fleets and knowing that, hey, 30% of them are going to be just available drivers in the market here in the next, what would you say the time frame on time frame on that would be? You know, I think once the spot market starts to turn, you're going to start to see quite a few carriers uh, struggle to survive because the one thing that we tend to see is the most important thing that affects whether a new business lasts is how productive it is. Right. And given how unreasonably or how unnaturally elevated spot prices have been, there can be a lot of companies that right now are surviving on low productivity just because rates are so high. Right, right. right. Once those rates start coming down, you're going to see those low productivity carriers start to fold fold up because they just won't be able to run into profit. Yep. And so I think that we'll start seeing that play out by again probably the third and fourth quarter of next year assuming spot prices essentially have sort of peak in 2021 and start to dry, slide down in 2022. All right, well let's pretend that you run a fleet. All right. What are the three or I don't know if three is the right number, but give me three things that you would be keep a close watch on going into 2022. Number one, focusing on productivity. Um, mo most important thing as a carrier is, you know, how many loaded miles a week are my drivers getting? If there's certain clients that are holding your equipment up too much, you know, have the conversation and or considering find, you know, finding alternative freight. So focus on productivity. Focus on your core driver workforce and keeping the folks who've been there 10, 15 years, assuming again, you're an established carrier, right. making sure those folks don't leave. You know, Every carrier goes through the situation where you're going to have a periphery of employees that you're going to churn through maybe two, three times a year, right. but you don't want to lose those core employees. There's too much research um, that suggests that is much more detrimental. And I'd say, again, from a, if you want to expand um, is thinking about especially how sustainable is this additional demand that you expect. I think one of the challenges we've had with, for example, the Los Angeles to Chicago lane is so many carriers are hesitant to add capacity on that lane because how, for how much longer can imports stay this elevated? And for how much longer will the railroads be hauling you know, fewer intermodal containers such that there's even more long haul freight? It's it's a hard business case to add, you know, add equipment when equipment's at record prices for a right. lane where demand may not be there in a year and a half from now. I know a lot of fleets are dealing with, you know, new trucks being back ordered due to trans what is not transistors, is it? It's semiconductors. A, semiconductors. I don't know why I say transistors. Yeah, due due to uh, semiconductors. Uh, what what should we expect to see there in twenty twenty two? I think you'll see output will be better by the middle part of the year. Again, it, it seems that the semiconductor shortfall right now for the motor vehicle sector is starting to address itself. Um, and so I expect to see more output by the, the middle of the next year. Um, trailers are another issue right now where actually output is even more constrained than, in, um, than for the trucks themselves. Oh, okay. And so I think that the one thing to keep in mind, again, as a carrier is if you're wanting to expand is taking on additional equipment when it's being priced at record levels, especially if it's used, that's giving you a different cost structure than you may be used to. And so you really have to ask yourself, am I going to profitably be able to, you know, haul freight, assuming again, the pricing that we've seen is all time high increases on a percentage basis that cannot continue indefinitely. Right. And so I think that that's sort of the one, one thing I urge right now is for carriers is to focus on what are your profitable loads and lanes, make sure that you, you can secure that freight, but also start evaluating, are there some lanes I'm hauling that I'm only hauling now because spot prices are at record levels, but if that pricing drops, this is no longer profitable. Okay. Well, I really appreciate your time, Jason. Uh, that was that was a lot of great info that I know our clients will love. Um, anything else you would add before we get off here? Um, one thing I would add is there's been so much discussion about the need to replenish retail inventories being this thing that's going to 
cause prolonged continued demand. And quite frankly, I don't see that the data supports that argument um, from a standpoint that retailers, the amount, the reason that retail or shipments have been so high is due to demand. Right. And yes, inventories have been built down, but all it takes is demand returning to normal. They're returning to the pre-pandemic trend. And pretty quickly, those retail inventories can be built back up. And so the one thing I would say is I keep hearing this narrative about retail inventory replenishment going to cause the market to be strong all through 2022. And the data from the Census Bureau just doesn't support that narrative. So that's sort of one caution I would urge. Well, if you guys enjoyed this info, I'll be happy to tell you that Jason will be actually helping us put out a monthly report that covers demand, supply, and price, the big three. So be look on the lookout for that in 2022. How was that? <laughs>